first thing, don't stop eating. Don't stop feeding healthy foods like vegetables and fruits to your child. We're not going to just go into a Pop-Tart situation to avoid these metals. I mean, who knows what's in there anyway? Why the hell are there toxic heavy metals in baby food? And it's not just baby food, it's all of our food. Isn't that wonderful news? So with all the lovely news that's going on in the world these days, from wars to viruses that are just bothering us more and more, um, and of course, toxic food. Isn't that what we all need, right? And it's not like we haven't had it before. It's just coming more to light now. Now, the FDA just released a report um, updating the, what their findings have been in terms of finding heavy metals so we're talking about things like mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic in our food supply. And at least thankfully, they're looking for it, right? I mean, this has been something that a lot of people have had concerns about for a while. And so at least it's nice that the agencies are looking into this problem into the first time. And we'll talk at the end about some potential solutions as to how we can make things better. OK, um, I've put the link to in the description below to this FDA report, um, and I've also put there um, a really nice report, very comprehensive, that's been put together by Consumer Reports, of course, one of our great watchdog agencies, um, both in terms of specific foods that are problematic, even up to the brand and those who are less, but also with some really wonderful suggestions beyond which I will get into um, later on um, for a more comprehensive look through so i would encourage you to look through there too but certainly this is depressing news because hey right we don't have enough depressing news going on already huh so anyway out of 384 baby food supply um samples that they took 65 percent of them had cadmium 51 percent had arsenic 21 percent had lead and three percent had mercury now it's been known for a very long time that heavy metals have are toxic to all parts of our body, but in particularly our brains. And children and the younger, the more so, who have the more developing the brains, the more vulnerable brains, the more that those toxic metals can be damaging, right? So great, it's in our baby food. Okay, now what they had found is that puffed snacks and teething biscuits were the, one, were the foods that were highest in arsenic. Now, that's not overly surprising if you've been following this story at all, because rice has consistently been one of the biggest problems. And a lot of these teething biscuits, a lot of these like finger foods, these puffs that kids are eating, which make for very good first foods in what they are because of the fact that they're able for babies to hold them, especially those, you know, who, when we start talking about baby led weaning, um, you know, being able to hold them very nicely, that they melt in the mouth so there's not much of a choking hazard. They can kind of gnaw on them and chew them pretty nicely. So for what it is, it's, they are really good for those perspective, but of course, not so great if they are hurting us and our children. Now. Um, in some parts of the world, this and why this is such a problem, because of course not all of our food is made here, but in some parts of our world, it's the water that's contaminating with arsenic. It's contaminated with arsenic. And rice happens to be one of the most absorbent plants when it comes to the so to the water out of the environment. So the, of course, the more arsenic that's in the water, the more arsenic that's going to get into our food supply. Now, personally, Besides the fact that those are good favorite foods, and there could be certainly other types of puffs that have come about that don't involve um, rice, but in general, I don't, you know, what is the first thing that, we, that most doctors will recommend for baby food is rice cereal. Now, in my opinion, that's empty calories anyways, and I never recommend giving grains to babies first off. I recommend getting vegetables, um, going through all of them, you know, every um, four days when introducing a new food. If, Two foods are tolerated. They can add another food, add them together, and adding more foods. Um, we're looking for allergic reactions, and of course, baby feeding can be happening um, when they're developmentally ready, usually around five to six months of age. Um, but you know, it's just there, there's just not a lot to that. So I'd prefer much more nutritious, much more dense avocado type of foods. You know, um, that that can you know that can just be much more nutritious. And I don't really see the point of giving a lot of grains to baby in the first place. Now. Um, the foods that had the highest amount of lead in it were baking soda, cocoa powder, baby food, sweet potatoes, and of course the teething biscuits as well. So um, that of course, quite a concern. Now the foods with the highest amount of cadmium in them 
We're sunflower seeds and spinach, right? Spinach, great food, healthy food. Well, what are we doing here? Now, I, again, I will give the FDA credit because at least they're looking to it. And a couple of years ago, they put together something called a, a plan, an action plan called Closer to Zero with, as he, the, the name sounds, it's to try to get the levels closer to zero, okay? And so when they're finding them in the middles, obviously there are some products that are much higher than others. And we'll talk a little bit about that more, how we can determine that. But still, obviously in a perfect world, we would have no metals, but then again, in a perfect world, there would be no um, none of these forever chemicals and BPAs and the things that um, are not clearing our bodies. You know, it, we're, we, we've we've kind of done as a as a culture, as a society, so much to our food supply that my goodness, you know, you, you know these some of these forever chemicals. At, besides, they don't go away. Roundup is found in everybody. Um, you know, one of the labs that we work with um, has, who had, can, can measure um, um, the glyphosate, they can't figure out what a normal level is because everybody has it in there. So again, of course, for those things, eating organic can certainly make a difference. Now, what can people do? Okay. Now, first thing, don't stop eating. Don't stop feeding healthy foods like vegetables and fruits to your child. We're not going to just go into a Pop-Tart situation to avoid these metals. Who knows what's in there anyway? Now, as I mentioned, Consumer Reports has this really amazing list of the foods, um, and they, it, that's linked in the description below as well. Um, but it does discuss the specific products, which are safe or not. Um, and they also have a – I'm going to talk in a little bit about some of the other approaches that we can be taking individually. But the Consumer Reports link in the, in the description below has even more information there. So you may want to check that out because it, it, I was pretty impressed with how much and how much detail they went into. Now. It is not clear that making baby food is any healthier or safer than store-bought store -bought jarred food or pouches. Um, in fact, it may be because you know some of these companies they are taking responsibility while they're trying to figure this out. There are companies who are screening now. There are companies who are really already starting to take mitigating measures in terms of trying to lower the amounts in there. And of course, that may not be to the same level as just regular fruits and vegetables bought in our stores. Um, but again, we can't be stopping just eating these foods, right? Um, now. It's also not even clear that organic foods are better from this perspective. Of course, from a pesticides and, you know, again, the Roundup and, and everything else, there, there are certainly other advantages to organic food. So, of course, I'm not saying we should all ditch organic food. But I am saying don't think just because you're getting organic that that means that this is not a problem. In fact, some of the organic companies were some of the bigger offenders, as you'll see in the Consumer Reports link. Now, what are some things that people can do? Well, grow your own food. Right. Obviously, we do have people who live in more rural areas who do, but people can in their and outside in their own backyards can put together gardens where they can then know what is the soil that you're using for your plants and um, your fruits and vegetables. What is the water supp supply that you're using, filtering water, et cetera, as opposed to just getting rain runoff, river runoff, et cetera. So that certainly is, uh, is an option for some some people. I know it's laborious. Um, I know that there are co-ops out there that people can um, can join to where they can where different people grow different fruits but they're kind of co-opting so it's much more local that way so again those are some things that people can do again um farmers markets could be a, a good source as well um for some of these things of course i would talk to the farmers themselves to find out what mitigating measures that they are taking okay now optimizing hydration of course both for babies but also for all people the more hydration the better hydrated a person is the more we are flushing things out of our system so our kidneys that's how we do it. That's one of our main filters, getting rid of the toxins. So the more fluid we have in our body, the less we're trying to hold on in order to maintain our blood volume. And the more that we're able to pee out in that filtration, that wasty kind of way. And of course, when a person is well hydrated, they're going to have better bowel movements as well because things will move along faster. Um, and so the better we poop overall, the more we detoxify. Right. So our liver is our other main organ of detoxification. It secretes the toxins into the bowels. And then, so how often do we have a bowel movement? You know, some people may not even be having daily bowel movements, sometimes only a few times a week. A healthy person should be passing two to three poops a day. And, you know, the, of course, how healthy does the poop look? Is a person passage, passing a formed log or is it looking something different? Are there undigested food particles in the stool that makes you think things are just not being digested and absorbed well as well? So that's an important thing. 
you know, if you're not or your child is not passing a poop the way it's supposed to. And of course, baby poops are supposed to look different than um, than than more grown up um, older kids and grown ups um, for what their poop looks like. But um, of course, a healthy looking poop. We know that even in a breastfed baby that it changes over when food, when uh, when solid foods and other foods are starting to be brought in as well. But is the poop healthy looking? OK. And if you're not having two to three poops a day, maybe there are things that we should be doing to increase it, like making sure that we have enough fluids um, in the body. Um, there are charts out there, depending on a person's age and sex, that there's different um, amounts of fluid intake that a person should be having on a daily basis. Also, the bulking up of our stool in order to make it pass through. The law of average uh, for children is however old they are, plus five, plus five equals the amount of, of, of uh of grams of fiber that they should be consuming per day. So again, the bigger, the healthier our poops are, the more we're passing them, then the more toxins we're, that we're getting rid of. Okay, now, also, if you're not passing poops very well, frequency, things like prunes, prune juice, kiwi. Um, that's, there's new research on there that kiwi, eating a couple kiwis a day, one a day for kids, um, is better at releasing poop then um and moving it along then prunes are so there's something else for you because some people may like prunes if you like kiwis you can have a good choice there too um now and also we need to be thinking are we optimizing our detoxification systems okay so you've probably heard me talk about the master detoxifying protein of our body called glutathione and glutathione is something that um, I take as a daily basis as a supplement. Um, there are liquid versions that can be given to babies mixed into their baby food, etc. And that's something that we talk to our patients about a lot. But taking glutathione, that's certainly one of the ways because glutathione um, um, can neutralize heavy metals. OK, people sometimes will take N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine gets turned into glutathione. So in terms of helping our bodies produce more glutathione, that's where N-acetylcysteine can come into play. Now, also optimizing our methylation pathways, okay? So I, this is something that Dr. Ben Lynch and I had gotten into in great detail in our interview from uh, earlier this year. Um, but you've probably heard people talking about, or me talking about MTHFR, which is the gene that is responsible for the enzyme that activates methylates folate into methylfolate and the activation of B12 to methyl B12. So there's this whole pathway called the methylation pathway um, where, where we where ultimately, um, besides being involved in other really important parts of our metabolism, um, creates then onto making the cysteine and glutathione. So if your methylation pathways are not optimized, which is something that we do through a, text, a test called the Maximized Function Test or the, through a company called Max, Maximized Genomics, we can then see who has the ability to activate, which is do methylation, methylate their B12 or their folate. If you genetically can't do that, you can take methylated B12. You can take methylated um, folate. So right there, there are definitely things. And again, there's age-appropriate dosings that we can give to young children as well. And that's something that I, that I often do as well um, and something we do with a lot of our special needs kids as well. All righty. So um, is the sky falling on us? No, it's not falling on us. Is this great news? Of course, it's not great news. But at least you now have some additional tools that you can do to keep you and your family healthy. Check out that Consumer Reports from, um, special study because there's a lot in there. And uh, to your health, have a nice day.